So how mm -hmm. can people take advantage of each system, socialism, capitalism? So for one thing, people are going to take advantage of systems. They're going to find loopholes. They're going to find ways around. They're going to find ways to, to at times, um, dominate and coerce others, even in systems meant to get rid of domination and coercion. That's why we need to design our systems in a, such a way that, that it eliminates as many of these things as possible. And also, that's why we need democracy. We need freedom. So in a Soviet system, for instance, uh, you had the rise of this authoritarian bureaucracy that dominated and coerced others in the name of socialism. Now, that system desperately could have used some political democracy and some checks on what people were doing and some ability to reverse the power, right? And as soon as, of course, little elements of democracy was brought into that system, um, the system, you know, collapsed uh, because there, there started to be outlets for, for dissent and for dissatisfaction. So I think we can't design a priori a perfect system. We need to be committed to certain principles that allow systems to be per perfected. And for me, that's the importance of democracy. So even a few years ago, not to go on a, on a tangent, but um, people were lauding Chinese authoritarianism. And they're saying, China is building this efficient system, the state runs so well, there's technocratic excellence, plus there's just productivity, and they're just working harder than Americans and, and whatever else. But look at in practice what really happened with COVID, both the initial suppressing of information about what was happening in, in, in Wuhan and the outbreak where many uh, ordinary Chinese workers and doctors and others were trying to get the word out and they were suppressed um, by, by Communist Party officials locally in, in, in Wuhan, probably with the collusion naturally, nationally, and now, now with zero COVID po policies and whatever else. So I think that that often we find that even though it seems like these are, are weak systems and, and democracy makes us less uh, competent technocratically and otherwise, uh, I think it's kind of a necessity for systems to grow and evolve, to have that freedom in civil society. But as for individuals, now, the first part of it is, yeah, I think people should be free to make their own choices. You might have tremendous potential, but you might choose to spend it in leisure. And leisure doesn't only mean doing, you know, sitting around at home, drinking a bunch of beers, kind of wasting your life away that way. Leisure might mean spending more time with your friends and family, building these sort of relationships that are going to maybe not change the world in some, some meta sense, but will change the lives of the people around you and will change your community for the, for the better. I'm, I'm taking notes here because I, for me, leisure just meant playing a lot of Skyrim. This whole family <laughs> relationship thing, I'm going to have to work on that. I didn't realize that's also including leisure. So yeah. I'm going to have to reconsider my whole life here. Hey, anyway. le le no, leisure should mean civic activity too, right? I mean, there's that famous book, the the Robert Putnam one, Bowling Alone or whatever, which described that for now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I am I'm was born in 1989. I like, you know, um, video and computer games, you know. Um, so I definitely do that type of leisure too. But uh, I found a lot more richness in my life when in the last, you know, decade, a lot of my leisure has returned to like going to the local bar for like the couple drinks I have a week instead of doing it at home alone watching TV or something, you know, because you get that random conversation, that sense of a place and, and, and belonging. But I guess what's the undercurrent maybe of your question was, now, if you have a system with lots of carrots, but not the whip of, hey, you might be destitute, you might be unemployed, you you might not be able to support yourself unless you're you're working a certain amount, would we still be as productive? Would we still be able to generate enough value for society? Um, and I think that that's a question that that is is quite quite interesting. I think that we're living in a society now with enough abundance that we could afford more people deciding to opt out of the system, out, out of production, and that the carrots of staying in, you know, more money for consumption, more ability to do cool things, more just social rewards that comes from being um, successful or from, from providing, uh, would be enough. But that's another thing that would have to be balanced in a system. So if you're seeing mass um, unemployment by choice in a democratic socialist system, 
then you might need to reconfigure the incentives. You might need to encourage people to go back into production. But that's something that, again, you could do through democracy and through good governance. Um, you don't have to set the perfect blueprint um, in, in motion. Um, you know, write up a treatise now and 50 years from now, you know, try to uh, follow it like it's scripture. 